Hey everybody, my name is Adam Neely. I'm here with the one and only Rick Beato. We're here at GitCon 2018 and we're teaching you how to not suck at music. And Rick's. So our first example is we're going to be uh, checking out a jazz reharmonization of Despacito. <clears throat> jazz Pasito. this right here. So far we're very much on the beat with all of these chord progressions. I don't really question any of them. The one thing I would question is maybe this B major 7 with the D natural and the C sharp in the melody. Um, maybe if you wanted to make that a major 7 sharp 9 voicing to maybe better reflect that D in the melody that might I guess jive a little bit better but I guess that's my one question mark so far. I like the spice. I do. I very much like it. There's a couple things that that uh, I think musically don't work. There's a you know dotted quarter eighth note where the chord is repeated twice. That's kind of, it's on the next page. This yeah, guy, the, those guys. Yeah, it just makes it sound a little bit corny when you when you hear those that anticipation. You're giving away the chord. That's the only time you have any kind of syncopation in there. I would maybe experiment a little bit more since it is Despacito getting more of the Tricio rhythm, like, yeah, dun, uh, 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 uh. Because right now it's just like chord, 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 which is fine, but I think maybe fleshing out the piano arrangement a little bit more might be nice. Let's keep listening. Yeah, it's a little bit more of like a, it's like a musical theater moment. <laughs> ba -da, ba -da. Which is fine, I'm down with the musical theater moments, but I think it, just in context, is a little bit of a non sequitur. Okay, so something like there in, that, in, in this bar here, you wouldn't not really play something. Da, 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 da. Yeah. It's just kind of a stiff pattern. That just comes out of left field there, the, the two eighth notes, and then the half note that goes yeah. over the center of the bar. Ba, da, da. You know, it doesn't really happen anywhere else in the song like that. And that A over E flat with the D accented in the melody too, I don't see the reason for that, right. that rub. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's there. I like it, but it's a little, little too aggressive. I mean, we got the ba, buddha, and I was like, all right, we're, we're in it. We're now in the rhythm. And it's, yeah, you didn't give it to us. It's also, everything is very much bass note in three. Yeah. Which is fine, but... It's all vertical. There's no counterpoint at all yeah. in, any of the, in any of the accompaniment. It's all just chord after chord after chord. It would be nice to see some, some actual inner line movement between these things to connect them. If you're going to use these sounds, they need to be connected to me. Some notes need to be held over. There needs yeah. to actually be some counterpoint between them. Kind of going doing this contrary motion thing, which is nice, but maybe you can make that even more contrary motion. The accompaniment doesn't feel very fleshed out. You have this this ascending movement, and then you go from F sharp down to A, which is a really awkward move root-wise. Especially with like really non-functional harmony, I try and make make it like um, fifths, fourths, and stepwise motion, just to connect it a little bit more. And as yeah. you have an ascending line like that, you typically will go through over the bar line and then you'll move somewhere else. You, you don't yeah. want to go up and then it'd be like having a leading tone there, a G sharp, and then dropping down to the A, which is, you know. Yeah, that, that'd be a little weird. There's so many things that you could do to like maybe finesse that measure, but we're, we're, getting, <laughs> we're getting pretty <laughs> sidetracked with this one measure. Let's keep going. <laughs> A 
sus over C sharp there. I use that a lot there. That chord, yeah. chordal voice amp. I call it uh, E chordal over C sharp. The musical theater composer Jason Robert Brown uses a lot of those for whatever reason. He really likes that, so I call that the Jason Robert Brown chord. Okay. So, anyway, it's a good chord. I'll, st I'll start referring to it as that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and then there was this like triplet thing. That was nice. I like the triplet thing. Ba -ba -da -do. Just because it adds more rhythmic interest to well, this. Well, there, see, we get some moving lines here now. Yeah, uh, you got the plain triad on top. Yep. It's it's just like a little bit more of a thing versus chord, 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 chord. Um, let's check out the next verse. because there's a lot of stuff that just happened. That pedal was really cool. I, yeah. I, I liked everything about that pedal. There was a lot of tension building. Like, you, you really feel it. I didn't question any one of those chords because the pedal really kept us grounded and yeah. the pedal was ascending. You can do whatever, whatever you want on top of that pedal. I don't know if I'd call it counterpoint there, but it's the first thing where you actually have chords happening, but you have something else with a different rhythm going on with it. It feels like a nice, like, building moment. All of this is cool. This is like, yeah. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> say that I don't quite agree with this stylistic <laughs> choice. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a little too goofy. I don't know. Because it, it's like you just built up all this tension and then you go into this like the tap dance number. <laughs> I mean it depends on how it, you play it though. Like right. if it becomes like a John Zorn moment where it's just like this like tongue in cheek, I don't know. Yeah thing. to be fair if this was not played on Sibelius yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's one of the one of the elements of it that uh, Sibelius has a way of of, uh, <laughs> of killing like, the right, vibe. Right. <laughs> I guess it kind of goes to show like it really depends on the music that you make with it. Like we right. can say we can say whatever we want about the chords, but until somebody actually plays it, it it's not actually anything, you know. Right. Especially with the with the melody doing that voice, the the fake voice like that is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when people present things like that, it's that's actually an important element to me is to actually present a a proper demonstration of it. Yeah, and of course, it's difficult to one find people who can convincingly deliver this, like being able right. to have it in your ear enough so that you can play it. It's not so much that you can play it; you have to really deliver it. it comes down to the, the texture when you when the ear starts hearing the same number of voices. Yeah. It starts, I, I mean, to me, I start to tune out. I mean, I think the most effective thing in this was that second verse with the building. Um, with the pedal. The pedal, yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was great. I love that part. You can never go wrong with pedals. Yeah, pedals, pedals are great. <laughs> uh, guitar and otherwise. Let's do maybe one more. This guy um, did this horn arrangement okay. for his band. All right. And he just he's never really done horn arranging before. And okay. this is the arrangement. It's very simple. I think he just wants ideas for arranging for horns. And then this is the recording, a rehearsal recording. <laughs> So we actually have real instruments now, so it's like we can, actually, we can actually hear the music. <laughs> that makes a massively big difference. It really, truly does. With the other thing, you have to imagine it. This we actually experienced it, which is really cool. Yeah. My initial instinct is, of course, these voicings sound great. The, the articulation, you could be a little bit more punctuated. You could have those chord notes at the end of those phrases be more like ba, ba, versus ba, da. And maybe like doing like some sort of offbeat thing at the end of every four phrase. One, two, two, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, uh, like, and like really like lay back on that. Like, I think just having a little bit more syncopation and um, horniness. <laughs> <laughs> more, yeah. I, I think that that's the thing that's difficult for people is that when they harmonize things, they just th always are thinking vertically instead of thinking more like, you know, I mean, listen to Bill Evans, listen to, 
you there's know, a lot of this. A lot of inner yeah. line moving. And yeah. uh, listen to Keith Jarrett or Brad Meldow. Typically, piano players know how to move the voices like that. Yeah. Having some of that contrapuntal movement in here will really kick this up a notch. Typically, you find similar rhythms. You know, you can find things in shout choruses where you'll have people playing in block chords. You know, and yeah. drop, drop voicings and things like that. But, but uh, you know, I think that there's some spots in here that could could be uh, spiced up a little bit more too. Little details yeah. add a lot. Let's check out maybe one more, one sure. more. And then we'll, we'll call it. thing in there it's a little yeah, weird but yeah that what would you say was weird about that? i think that there's there's a, a missing accidental is what it sounded like that last chord is that what you're talking about yeah or, i think that's intentional da. yeah i mean i it sounds a little hokey as to go to that like dominant chord there yeah. honestly but da, that da. yeah maybe just to a to an a there you go. Yeah. Fixed. Yeah. This has everything that we talked about that the other two songs uh, yeah, needed. Yeah. Harmonically simpler. Harmonically it, simpler, yeah. beaut beautiful sounding. Yeah. Really, really, really beautiful. It doesn't need to be complicated to have a lot of interest as long as there's some sort of balance between rhythm, texture, and like we were saying, like moving lines. There's a yeah. lot of moving lines. A lot of moving lines and, and beautiful, beautiful <clears throat> harmony to it. There was one thing that I was gonna say orchestrationally this moment where it just goes to the guitar briefly. Like, yep. I, I have questions about that. Whenever you have those moments where it drops out very briefly, you kind of always want to have a little bit of space before the next instrument comes in. Otherwise, the, the ear doesn't have enough time to like... To, yeah, to re react to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, those are things where uh, on here it can sound like it works okay, but in a live application, it's it's uh, it doesn't necessarily... I mean, you've written arrangements, you know what, what these things sound like, and that you know the types of things to avoid when you're doing that. Yeah, and that's... For that reason that you just said. Yeah, and that's the thing, is like, you could master the Sibelius playback. You could master it and just make it, like, beautiful and write the best amazing music, and then, and, like, all within, you know, the instrument's ranges, and then you go and play it, you know, have people play it back, and then just be like, why doesn't it sound that, that right. way? And it's, you know, the human element is very important. Um, but little details, you can only pick up on those things after you know, do, doing it. Yeah, it's, ex it's experience, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> nice. I would just say that that, you probably want that to be an A sharp, not a B flat. Yeah. M minor quibble, but that yeah. Picardy third technically needs to be an A sharp. Right. Um, there was one, one brief little moment, this uh, C, this like, uh, D in the guitar on top of that C sharp in the bass. You might want to find some C sharp to like double that with just to make sure it doesn't sound like the bass player is making a mistake because it almost sounds like the bass player should be playing a D when you hear right. that. Even if the bass player is supposed to be doing that, whenever the bass player clashes with any other instrument, it always ends up sounding like the bass player made a mistake. Right. Yeah. We don't want that. Yeah. No, don't blame, don't blame me. Even if I'm playing the right notes. Hey, it's written like this. It's written like this, I swear. I think we might have to stop there because I think we're out of time. But that was a, that was a cool arrangement. A cool I like song. that. Yeah. I'd, That's great. I mean, I don't really have much to, s to say about that. Like, was... get, get, a, get, get a real group together yep. to play that. That's really cool. Play it. But that sounds, it sounds good in Sibelius. Yeah. and That's the thing. And like some MIDI, some MIDI does sound decent. Like it sounds like video game music, honestly. It's right. like a good, like a good sound chip on a, like a, I don't know, N64 or something like that. Um, yeah, it's great. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rick, for joining me Adam. on this episode of How to Not Suck at Music. <laughs> and until next time.